Welcome to the ABI Snapshot, where we spotlight critical findings and the latest research from our global team of analysts. In this snapshot, we're speaking with Andrew Zignani, Wireless Connectivity Research Director at ABI Research. Andrew will answer key questions about the next generation of hearing aids and assistance based on his recent Bluetooth technology research. Welcome, Andrew. Hi, Deb. Thanks for having me today. Everyone knows about Bluetooth wireless audio, but how does it play into hearing aids? Well, the next generation of Bluetooth audio technology, um, also known as LE Audio, will we expect to be a kind of game changer for around the 1.5 billion people um, who live with hearing loss today. Um, we believe that LE Audio has the potential to transform the, the hearing aid market. It will bring better overall audio quality, um, easier development of hearing aids uh, and true wireless devices in general. Um, but above all, LE Audio will enable these new public and private audio sharing use cases, um, broadcast audio, as well as these new assistive listening applications. The FDA recently established a category for over-the-counter hearing aids. How do you see that affecting the hearing aid market? So, yeah, this is the, this is a really fantastic move. You know, U.S. consumers now can who have, you know, mild to moderate hearing loss can now purchase hearing aids directly from stores or online retailers. Um, without having a medical exam, uh, an audiologist visit, or, or a specific prescription. Uh, and that's why by the end of the decade, um, ABI Research believe that this new over-the-counter market segment will significantly overtake the existing hearing aid market size of that today. Are there Bluetooth hearing aids already on the market? Yeah, there are a number of Bluetooth hearing aids already on the market. So Apple's MFI hearing aid technology, um, Google's ASHA implementations already exist. Um, at ABI Research, we expect the overall penetration of Bluetooth technology to increase in these hearing aids over the coming years. And again, that's thanks to the ability of LE Audio to kind of standardize the overall user experience, open up the market beyond these closed vendor ecosystems today, and also enable these new innovative interoperable Auracast broadcast audio use cases, which are extremely vital. What is Auracast broadcast audio? So yeah, Auracast is perhaps you know, arguably from our perspective, the most meaningful new feature of LE Audio. It enables several audio streams to simultaneously broadcast or be broadcast to an unlimited number of receivers via these new audio transmitters. Um, Auracast broadcast audio can also be deployed in you know, a, a wide variety of public locations such as gyms, um, theaters, cinemas, places of worship. Um, transport hubs like airports and railway stations, as well as, you know, venues and arenas. Can you give us an example of how Auracast can benefit those with hearing loss? Yeah, of course. So imagine you're in an airport and you can listen, you know, to specific announcements through your hearing aid directly. Or if you're, you know, in a gym or a bar, sports bar, for example, um, you can now listen to, you know, a TV or basically tune in to a TV, um, you know, via your headset. Um, to listen to the specific audio stream when it's low volume traditionally. Wow. So Auracast has the potential to enable a global assistive listening ecosystem, yes? Yeah, absolutely. So we believe that Auracast will become this next generation assistive listening technology, and it will really help um, and assist those with all levels of, of hearing aid, uh, hearing you know, deficit, so from mild to severe as well. But we also think that it's going to take, obviously, some time and there'll be a few hurdles to overcome if it is to build success. Such as? Well, uh, you know, firstly, you know, hearing aid uptake itself is still relatively limited. Um, that's due to, you know, the cost of the devices being quite high. There's still stigma around hearing aid use. There's a lack of perceived need from many, many people with hearing loss. Uh, and of course, there's many different educational barriers about what hearing aids can provide and what Auracast can provide in the future. And of course, there's also the regulatory side. So, um, you know, much work still needs to be done to kind of incentivize the deployment of assistive listening technologies such as Auracast uh, in public venues or as becoming, you know, you know this new audio standard for, for new building developments. You know, but despite all that, you know, we believe that Auracast transmitters have the potential overall to be more cost effective, provide a much more consistent and high quality you know, user experience and also be much easier to deploy. So we believe this will lead to a much greater expansion of assistive listening solutions than other technologies have been able to provide you know, so far. 
As more OTC hearing aids, conventional headsets, and true wireless earbuds support LE audio and AuraCast, the lines will blur between consumer devices and assistive listening devices, yes? Yeah, absolutely. So we believe that, you know, many more people with mild to moderate hearing loss will be able to take advantage of these new lower cost interoperable solutions that can also, you know, begin to engage with these future AuraCast deployments in, in, in public venues uh, and also benefit from improved uh, assistive listening experiences across the board. So this you know, greater variety of devices should hopefully also lead to the removal of any remaining stigma around those with hearing loss or hearing aids, uh, and instead spur on a whole new wave of innovation and greater accessibility for millions of people around the world who suffer from, from hearing loss. Thanks so much, Andrew. For a deeper dive into the next generation of hearing aids and assistance, visit abiresearch.com.